Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. With the Spain News Update, we'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the Spanish press over the last day or so, uh, outside here with this fantastic view behind me. So let's get stuck in to the news. And Spain's Vice President, Yolanda Díaz, says that the anti-crisis measures are positive but insufficient. It is impossible to shop in our country, she says. The second Vice President, Minister of Employment and Social economy and leader of Suma, Yolanda Díaz, said on La Hora de la Uno that the measures of the anti-crisis decree approved in the last Council of Ministers in 2023 are positive but not enough and pointed out that it is impossible to shop in Spain, not just at Christmas. Díaz said that we are experiencing an unprecedented crisis and said that Suma has defended in particular two measures that they consider important, one of them universal transport subsidies for everyone and the maintenance of taxes on large fortunes and financial institutions. So there we go, some strong words from Spain's Vice President Yolanda Díaz, also Minister in Spain Ms. Díaz and leader of the political party Suma, saying that it's impossible to shop in Spain, not only at Christmas time, but the rest of the year as well, because things are very, very expensive and the government needs to help people out. And where is the government going to get the money for these subsidies? Well, obviously, they're going to tax big corporations, for example, Spanish banks. And let me say, Spanish banks are not happy about that extraordinary tax. Now, the second piece of news we'll look at today about Spain's Prime Minister, Pedro Sánchez, and he has reiterated the fact that Spain will not participate in that Red Sea mission. And as we can read here, Pedro Sánchez insists that Spain will not participate in a mission in the Red Sea unless it is with NATO or the EU. The government remains firm in its rejection of the extension of Operation Atalanta, created in 2008 to fight piracy off the coast of Somalia, with the United States' plans to protect ships sailing in the Red Sea from attacks by Yemen's Houthi militia in response to Israel's offensive in Gaza and the West Bank. Spain is not opposed to the creation of another operation, in this case the Red Sea, but what we have discussed with our allies, both in NATO and in the European Union, is that we can consider that Operation Atalanta does not have the characteristics or the nature of the one required and needed in the Red Sea, Pedro Sánchez explained. The President said he was open and willing, without going into details, to participate in a specific NATO mission in the Red Sea. So there we go, quite clear there from the Prime Minister's words that Spain will not participate in any actions in the Red Sea unless they are with the European Union or NATO. And that part of the world, I will say, currently a real hotspot with all of the attacks that are taking place there. Another piece of news and related to Spain's nuclear ambitions, or should I say Spain's lack of nuclear ambitions, and it is that the Spanish government has approved a new radioactive waste plan and has paved the way for nuclear shutdown in Spain. On Wednesday, the Council of Ministers approved the seventh general radioactive waste plan, which sets out the roadmap for the treatment of this hazardous waste, which mainly comes from nuclear power plants. Precisely, this plan, whose approval is eight years late, is an essential piece for Spain to be able to undertake the orderly closure of the five plants that are still active, which will begin in 2027 and will be completed in 2035. This decommissioning involves a complex process of dismantling the facilities and subsequent treatment of radioactive waste. So a new radioactive waste plan approved by the government only eight years late and essential, as we saw there, for Spain to be able to close its five existing nuclear power stations by 2035. They're going to start in 2027 and finish it by 2035. So no nuclear energy plans on the horizon for Spain post 2035. Let me know what you think about that. Should Spain be closing these plants down or investing more in nuclear technology and nuclear plants? Let me know in the comment section below. And the final piece of news we'll look at today is bad news for smokers because the price of tobacco in Spain is on its way up. As we can read here, smoking will be more expensive in Spain. Tobacco prices rise in 2024 for these brands. The Spanish Ministry of Health has adopted a new tax strategy to combat tobacco consumption. The initiative involves an increase in taxes on tobacco products and associated devices in order to reduce the accessibility of these unhealthy products. The ministry's decision is based on the idea that the higher the taxes, the lower the purchase of these products. 
With the main objective of reducing smoking, the Ministry of Health has emphasised the urgency of promoting the revision of taxation to allow for a significant and homogeneous increase in the prices of all tobacco-related items. This includes both traditional products and modern heating devices. The measure aims to create an economic barrier that discourages purchase and thus consumption. The Ministry reaffirms the need for a taxation policy that effectively contributes to public health. So more news about tobacco and smoking making headlines. We've seen in recent times how the government wants to ban smoking on outdoor seating areas at bars and restaurants and now an increase in tobacco prices. And the government in Spain seems to have finally realised that the more people have to pay for a packet of cigarettes or tobacco, the less likely they are to buy them. The same ideas that the government in this country, Australia, adopted some 20 or 25 years ago. And a packet of cigarettes here costs around 40 to 50 Australian dollars. Spain is still far from that price. Now let's have a look at some of the comments that have been left on videos recently. One here from Koffer, while you're in Australia, can you focus on more Australian news or perhaps a vid or two on the reasons why you should or shouldn't live in Australia? Yeah, Koffer, thanks for the comment, but unfortunately I don't think the majority of people that watch this channel are interested in what's happening in Australia, especially when it comes from a news point of view. But what I will say, the news that you see on local television here is completely different to the news that you see in Spain. Not only the content, but the type of news. And what I mean by that is that Spanish news tends to focus on politics a little bit too much for me, whereas news here is more general, talking about things that happen in society rather than constantly talking about what the Prime Minister and the opposition leader are doing, which is what happens in Spain. Yes, if there's a big political decision to be made, it will make the news, but it's not only politics that is spoken about here. For example, the typical nightly news in Spain of 40 minutes will dedicate 20 minutes of that bulletin to politics, whereas here, a 30-minute news broadcast, you'll maybe get two, three, or four minutes of politics, and that's about it. And the other thing that you mentioned here, Koffer, about doing some videos on why you should or shouldn't live in Australia, maybe I could put out a couple. One here from Guayames, have travelled around Australia several times by cruise ships. Really nice country and very diverse. The Perth area is great. Enjoy home. Yeah, thanks for the comment and I would agree with what you say there. The Perth area is a nice place. It's a nice city. It's a fairly calm city. It's a bigger city than I remember. Around 2 million people nowadays, I think. But it's close to places like this, so it's easy to get away. There are some traffic issues nowadays. We had some traffic jams coming down here, similar to the ones we get in Spain. So that was a bit of a shock. But once you get down here, it is a fantastic place. And uh, as you can see by the views behind me, uh, I'm sure you'd agree, right? One here from Karaiv. On one of my visits to my grandfather's hometown of Bilbao, I heard some racist comments about Moroccans. In Torres del Rio, on the Camino Frantes, a Bolivian family said that they had experienced xenophobia, even though they had built a restaurant, hotel and albergue invigorating this small town, maybe jealous of what their hard work had accomplished. However, I've seen nothing like the overt racism and xenophobia in the United States. Yeah, Karaiv, thanks for the comment. This comment related to something that we spoke about the other day, somebody mentioned that Spain was a racist country. The casual racism, I think, was the term that the person used. And I agree that you do here in Spain, every now and again, people using racist comments and uh, xenophobia. I have been a victim of xenophobia myself in recent times when somebody told me to go back to my country of origin. Nice fella he was. Is the racism and xenophobia in Spain similar to what happens in the United States? I've got no idea because I've never lived in the United States. But we all know that the United States has had its problems with these issues over the years, as has this country, Australia. And would people in Spain be jealous of the success of these Bolivians who own that hotel on the Camino Frantes? Possibly, but it's good to see that people can still have success in places like Spain if they work hard. Positive in my opinion. One here from Kirby, surely the drop in TV viewing has more to do with people unable to afford paying for TV than the popularity of the monarch. 
Yeah, Kirby, thanks for the comment, but as some people in the comment section pointed out, I imagine that you know this, having lived in Spain for a long time, that you don't pay for TV in Spain like you do in the UK. You don't pay for a TV license, for example. So I can only imagine that you're talking about the cost of buying a new television set, which can be expensive if you get the latest model. But if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. And I think what the article was referring to the other day when they said that viewership for the King's Speech was down was that people are not watching TV anymore because there are other things for them to do, like watch YouTube, Netflix, and other things like that, social media, for example, and they're not putting their eyeballs on the television like we used to do. One here from Kev. Great video, Stu. Hope you are having a fantastic time down there with family. The Spanish government, despite being slightly left of my ideal, seems to be trying to help their citizens. Ho for a UK government that would be the same of any colour. Still, another month and I won't be in the UK anymore. Thumbs up, icon not working. Yeah, Kev, thanks for the comment and thanks for trying to give a thumbs up even though it wasn't working. And when it comes to the Spanish government trying to help the average Spaniard out, yes, that does seem to be the case. There have been a series of measures approved over the last 12 months or so. And as we saw the other day, and also today, there is going to be an extension, or there has been an extension approved for some measures to help people out for the next six months. But as I said before, the big question, the most important question, is who is going to pay for it? The government thinks that they're going to get the money through taxes, taxing those big companies, taxing banks. But as we know, the banks and other big companies, when hit with these extraordinary taxes, often pass them on to clients. So unfortunately, I won't be celebrating just yet. One here from Kerry, north of Spain gets loads of water, south not so much. I've looked at the globe, Stu. It's all downhill. So what's the problem with the big pipe? Happy New Year. Yeah, Kerry, thanks for the comment, and you're right. I've looked at the globe too, and it is all downhill, so very easy, right? The water would just fall down from the north to the south. But hang on a minute, aren't there some people that say that the earth is flat? Well, then it would really be a problem, right? And before people go crazy in the comment section, I'm just being ironic. One here from Diane, monarchy, republics often lead to dictator style leaders. Yeah, Diane, thanks for the comment. This is always gonna be a hot topic, right? Do we have a monarchy, constitutional monarchy, or do we have a republic? For example, here in Australia, should we continue to be a constitutional monarchy, or should there be another vote to become a republic? I don't know. What do you think? Also in Spain, some people are in favor of the monarchy, some people prefer a republic. For example, in Catalonia, the government in power there would prefer Spain to be a republic, or at least Catalonia, to be a republic. Get rid of Philip VI. And do republics often lead to dictator-style leaders? I don't know. Are you thinking about any country in particular? Let me know. On that note, I'm going to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. I'm going to move the camera over there now so we can catch a little bit more of this fantastic view and the sunset. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. And remember, if you have an opinion on anything that I have spoken about today, that comment section that I just spoke about is the place for you. Uh, adios, hasta luego, bye bye from this part of the world.